It's another measurement of how hot it feels outside. It's called wet bulb temperature. This wet bulb globe temperature, it's a meteorological term that is used to describe the lowest temperature that can be achieved by evaporating water in the air. But what does that mean? That relative humidity that's used in the heat index we just mentioned, relative humidity is just the percentage of water vapor in the air compared to how much water vapor the air could hold. Wet bulb globe temperature is a more comprehensive measure. How they measure wet bulb globe temperature is they use a thermometer that has a wetted wick or a wet cloth around the bulb, that little bottom part of the thermometer. And as the water evaporates, it cools the bulb, just like your skin cools you by sweating. The temperature that is shown then on that thermometer is the wet bulb temperature, not just the temperature and that humidity, but it also takes into consideration the amount of solar radiation and the wind speed, because all of those things affect how hot it feels. So the wet bulb globe temperature takes all this stuff into consideration that the heat index does not. It measures how hot it could be outside where you could actually continue to cool yourself by sweating. When they get higher than that, your body isn't going to be able to cool itself. You're not going to be able to survive out there for very long. So if you see a wet bulb globe temperature that is over 88, that's a high danger. You need to take about 40 minutes in breaks each hour, meaning you need to spend most of the time resting, not working. We're seeing more and more wet bulb globe temperatures over 90. Extremely dangerous temperatures coupled with extremely dangerous levels of humidity. So this measure is being used not just in military contexts, but by people who work outdoors, construction, athletes, sports teams. So your local weather station might report the wet bulb globe temperatures nowadays. If they don't, you can look them up yourself because this can be very useful for you to plan, well, how much can I actually do outside today? And the increasing temperatures, the increasing humidity and extreme weather days, we will continue to see more and more days each year with these extremely high wet bulb globe temperatures, meaning you need to be very careful in most of those hours that you're outside resting, finding shade, staying hydrated. But even then, hydration isn't going to help as much as it would normally because again, your sweat isn't going to be able to cool you. So if you live especially in one of the areas that's going to be most affected, pay close attention to these measures. At a wet bulb globe temperature of 95 plus, human beings simply can't survive an extended amount of time outside, regardless of how well hydrated you are, especially if you're doing any kind of work outdoors, playing sports, especially for maybe the young people you know, the elderly folks that you might know, pay close attention. Frequency of these very high extreme temperatures are rising. In 2023, we set new records for the intensity and frequency of extremely humid heat. In all of the areas in which you see, we saw a drastic increase in the amount of these extremely hot days, coupled with high humidity. Throughout the Gulf, especially Central and South America, in continental Europe, and in the UK, and all throughout coastal Asia. 